But first, because they're not going away soon enough, the headlines breaking in the administration's 50 running scandals. Bush. Number three, wow, did he miss the point gate. In a radio interview conducted by his own sister, the president said he is relishing the chance to see the Klieg lights shift somewhere else when his presidency ends. But he will miss at least three things about the job. He will miss Air Force One. He will miss the chefs at the White House. He will miss not having to worry about traffic. If only we'd known that's why he liked the job, we could have collectively offered him those perks if he would have left early. Number two, mortgage gate. No later than January 2006, the Bush administration had at its fingertips, it proves, urgent recommendations about how to stop the toxic mortgage process, how to avoid what one lender told them then was otherwise, a future in which they should, quote, expect fallout, expect foreclosures, expect horror stories. And the administration ignored those warnings. And as the bank regulatory documents from which all the inflow is gleaned show, it bowed to lobbyists and other pressure groups and waited a year to do anything about no money down mortgages and the like. Like, by which time the mortgage meltdown and the domino effect on the economy were inevitable. One of the testimony records says that a gentleman named Kevin Stein of the California Reinvestment Coalition urged tighter lending rules saying, quote, otherwise we're going to be feeling the effects of the regulators failure to address these mortgages for the next several years. But number one, torture gate. A dramatic Washington Post op-ed on Friday, written under an assumed name by a former special ops interrogator who worked in Iraq in 2006. He writes he was startled by three things there. One, that trying to get information by torture was unproductive. Two, that switching to rapport building brought immediate results. And three, that the top reason captured foreign fighters said they had gone to Iraq was abuse by Americans at Gitmo and Abu Ghraib. The author says a detainee told him, I thought you would torture me, and when you didn't, I decided that everything I was told about Americans was wrong. That's why I decided to cooperate. And then the ex-special ops guy wrote something chilling and definitive, something that should end forever. Any debate over the usefulness or moral appropriateness of torture and end forever any debate over whether or not the Obama administration should aggressively prosecute all those who stained this nation with torture. He wrote... It's no exaggeration to say that at least half of our losses and casualties in that country have come at the hands of foreigners who joined the fray because of our program of detainee abuse. The number of U.S. soldiers who have died because of our torture policy will never be definitively known, but it is fair to say that it is close to the number of lives lost on September 11th, 2001. How anyone can say that torture keeps Americans safe is beyond me, unless you don't count American soldiers as Americans. To anybody who still thinks torture works, if anything besides sadism and revenge and the messiah complex can fit into your fevered brains, yes, William Crystal, I'm talking to you. Mark well those last words and atone for the ultimate of your many sins. The number of U.S. soldiers who have died because of our torture policy will never be definitively known, but it is fair to say that it is close to the number of lives lost on September 11th, 2001.